What a blessing. Well, it's time to give an offering. And I need you to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 43. And um, there, I'm going to show you something. Amen. Now, one of the things that I'm quite sure about is the presence of a curse. A curse in the world or curses. All right? And actually, what I'm also con conscious about is a mixture of blessings and curses. Blessed people seem to be cursed and cursed seem people seem to be blessed also. <laughs> it's true. I want to say um, concerning um, the healing Jesus offerings that we received a couple of weeks ago, um, we are waiting for you to do even better. Amen. Because we are very far from the target. We didn't reach in very far at all in the target that we set for Healing Jesus campaign. Um, because we didn't. So I'm saying that we must, you know, when we were singing that song, um, he came from heaven, you know, I need a, always a singer up here. He came from heaven to earth to show the way he came. He came. You know, it is important to realize how the church comes about. The secular world will never tell us how to run a church. Just like I can't go into a bank and tell somebody how to run a bank. Honestly, I must be honest. I mean, I know many people who work in banks. I can see people sitting in front here who work in banks. I don't know what they do. Yes, and I don't pretend that I know what they do because they have these glass buildings with many floors. And a lot of people go there and they are always there. And they are there for hours and hours and hours. What are they doing? You get it? And just as I have that respect for them to give out loans, to, all, to do all the things they are doing, the church cannot be dictated to by people's ideas of how the church should be. Oh, this is a normal church. This is how a church should be. You know, the church is the church. And how does the church come about? How does it come about? How does it become what it is? It becomes what it is by missionaries going to countries and living there for the rest of their lives. That's how the church comes about. That's how this church came about. That's how the church in Ghana came about. That's all. And there are obligations that we have as Christians. We are under obligation to do this work. That is our faith. We didn't come into the ministry looking for a job. Although the ministry provides jobs for people, we are not here seeking jobs. But that is not our reason for being in the ministry. Anyone who wants to be in the ministry can, should not take this place as an alternative source of employment. It is the ministry. And that's why people with a lot of money desires don't sit well here. It doesn't work. It may work for some time, but at a point you see that it is blowing up. Because that is not the reason for the church or for the ministry. And if we have anything, we are grateful. It's, it's a bonus. We are happy. But that's not the reason. 
So that's why you have to purify your heart before you ever think of being in a full-time ministry. And if you are looking at the church, you must know that the church works on foundations. I don't know what the foundation of a bank is. Lend money and get interest. Is it the foundation of a bank? Huh? Somebody who works at the bank should tell us. Is that our Deposit money. We'll use it for business and we'll make profit. And then we'll have your money for you ready when you come for it. And we'll make a lot of business. And we'll pay our employees a lot of money. Because they are working with money. Is, is, is this not how the principle... Is it correct? A good summary. I've seen some bankers here. <laughs> All right. So, the church needs to be supported to do expensive ventures like sending people to the ends of the world. now that we are going to fill 190 nations now that we are going to enter 190 nations it's now that we are going to have crusades in many places do you believe that once the Lord gives us life we are still around we don't know what else to do yeah so this is the time to give yes in a few years, you know, I remember one, there's a man of God from South Africa whom we have sometimes, I've had him. And I remember before he was even 70, it was like he, it was like he has retired from, um, means I asked him that what, do you say he can preach? He said he has preached in many crusades. He said, as for preaching, I can preach but to organize the crusade how I used to when I was younger, that is the part I cannot do. But to preach at the crusade, I can do it. Like stand here and preach. So you see, the ministry has certain kinds of work, but by a certain age, you can't do it. So I see this as a very special last minute effort. Because I can see, if I look at my age, I can see 60 is not far. And 70 is also somewhere. Hey! <laughs> so, I'm telling you, you know, let us really sense the agency. And those of us who are supporting, you have to give and support with all your heart. When salt is in the food, but it's not enough, it still doesn't make the food nice. It doesn't make a difference. You see, salt has to be enough before it salties the food. Is it right English? You know, you are the English experts. Yes. So you need salt has to be in a, if you are the salt of the earth and you are salting the world it has to be enough otherwise it still doesn't change anything. And it's the same thing with giving. If you are giving you have to give enough for it to make a difference. And that's what I'm saying. I'm just coming back to the healing Jesus campaign gifts and offerings that you were giving I am telling you that we didn't reach anywhere in the uh, whatever, abroad here, everywhere so I'm asking you to give again and to remember that that is our work and we are going to do it in a new way, in a better way, I believe God will give us the grace, amen because I think the pandemic is ending is changing into an epidemic. Do you know what an epidemic is? An epidemic is, is the pandemic, but it's not the whole world. 
pandemic is when it's, they have a certain number of countries beyond which then you know that it has engulfed the whole world. But then it can reduce that it's, it's still present. Because it's, not, it's not going to go away. But it's present in pockets and at various places. Yes, but not in the way that we've had it. And people are doing this. I hear the airport is full. Flights are full. People are traveling. Hey! And we shouldn't do church. We have to do it. All right? So, please let us remember Healing Jesus campaign. I, I asked for 1,000 people to give $1,000. And I'll explain to you some things I don't want. You know, when we do certain things, I don't come and ask you, so we have rented a ship. The ship is asking so many thousand euros. And I don't come and say all those things. So the little that we say, we are expecting your great support. And I believe that everybody is going to be part of this amazing healing. And I'll say it again before we close. Amen. We are almost closing now, but just remember, okay? We have, those of you who just come, we've had anointing service and everything here before you came. <laughs> you are late. <laughs> now, today I'm going to show you another escape from curses. In Isaiah 43, verse 22, it says, But thou hast not called me upon me, O Jacob. Jacob. Jake. But thou hast been weary of me. Been tired of me. You've been tired of me. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle. Huh? Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Now that neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. No sacrifices. You know, Christianity involves sacrifice. Giving up something you would have had. But you give it up. You give it up. I give up that boyfriend. I give up that girlfriend. I give up this money. I give up my car. I give up my land. I give up what I would have had. I give my comfort. I give my food. I give my stomach. I give my sleep. But you didn't. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor worried thee with incense. Now look at what the prophet is saying, verse 24. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money. Thou haven't brought me any money. Hmm? You've not bought me sweet cane with money. And neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. God is saying, I am not filling your sacrifices. You've not filled me. I'm not full. I'm not full. I don't feel full. God is saying, I don't feel full. I don't feel full of your sacrifices. But rather, instead of that, you've made me to serve with thy sins. And thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. Like you, instead of bringing me offerings, you've made me tired by your sins. So instead of bringing sacrifice, you bring sins. Hmm. So as you are sitting here, you know your condemnation. That's what you've brought. You've brought your sinfulness, your plagues, the bloodshed that you have shed this week in abortions. You have brought with your hands covered with blood the things you've said with your mouth. You've brought them all to the house of the Lord instead of bringing offerings and sacrifices. Verse 25. I am he that blotteth out thy transgression for my own sake, and I will not remember thy sins. He's explaining that, yes, I know I'm the one who forgives. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. 
Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. God is discussing with you. He said, plead and say your matter. Say your issues. Let's talk. God is ready to discuss with you. How many are ready to discuss with God? Yeah, you can talk to God. God understands and God hears. If you speak to him, he will hear every sentence you, you say. You know, when Jesus was going to heal the woman with, of the Syrophoenician woman's daughter, the woman said, when he said, dogs, the woman said, even the dogs eat bread. Then Jesus said to her, for this thy saying, this statement that you made, go home. You know, God hears your comments. And you're free. That's why when Aaron and Miriam speak against me, the Lord heard it. These things are things that God hears. So when you pray, the sentences you speak and the words you speak to God, he hears them. You know, one time Kenneth Hagin was, had, had a vision of Jesus. He had eight of such visions. And the Lord told him, he was explaining the reason why he had had a certain accident. And the Lord told him, you remember this meeting? He said, you were talking to some pastors and you said this. Hey! And the Lord, had, and he brought it up at the vision. He quoted him, but you remember you were talking to this people and you, you told them that this was your calling. He said, yeah. That was a mistake. You shouldn't have said that. So I'm just trying to say that God hears you when you talk, when you pray and you, 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 you mention English words, lines. He hears all your prayers and he hears your comments too. So better watch out. You never, you never escape because God is everywhere. Thy first father hath sinned and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Now, verse 28 is the scripture we are looking for. All right? Therefore, I have profaned the princes of thy sanctuary and I have given Jacob. You see, if you remember, we started... In Jacob, verse 22. So at the end he says, Therefore I have given Jacob to the curse. I have given Jacob to the curse. I have given Jacob to the curse. I have, I have dashed him to the curse. I have dashed him to the curse. Why? Because of what he said all the way. You've not brought me small cattle. You've not honored me with your sacrifices. You have not said, caused me to serve with an offering. You have not brought me incense to make me even tired of it. You have not brought me sweet cane with money. He says, therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and I've given Jacob to the curse. So once again, you can see the effect of Offerings on curses. In fact, God is saying that because of how you are, I've just I've allowed you, I've allowed you to just flow in the curse. That's why I'm saying that I can see. Hold on, hold on a minute. I can see the difference between between, or I can see the presence of both blessings. God, Jacob is blessed, but I can see there's also a curse. There's like a mixture. Yeah. You know, Jacob is blessed. God, he was blessed by his father Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the blessing. But now he's saying that I'm giving Jacob who is blessed to the curse. I don't think you are getting it. Let's read verse 22 again. It says, Thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. You have been weary or tired of me. Verse 23, you've not brought me the small cattle, the offerings, all this, you, I don't see, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't feel your presence. I don't feel your sacrifices. And it goes on, then at the end, 
He says, therefore, I have given Jacob to the curse. So here we see a cause of curses is not coming to God with the necessary sacrifices. And that's why people who are spiritual and understand the spiritual nature of what we have for the Lord, all right, of what we are doing, they understand it in such a way that they always come to the Lord with the necessary sacrifices. God notices whom you give money to. God notices it and it's offensive. You know, I know one pastor, hey, he, he, it caused a big problem in the church. You see, he invited somebody to preach and uh, as this person was preaching, a church member who has been in the church for years decided to bless the visitor. Do you see? The visitor. <laughs> the one who had come to preach with so many things. In fact, I've had two different pastors telling me similar stories. One of them said that he would be in the house and people in the church who have never honored him. Do you see? They've never honored him before. Because it happened that I went to that church and I, I really preached that they should honor their pastor. Because we who are visitors, we are just one time when you are a visitor, you just come and uh, you just say some jokes with uh, people have not heard that joke before, so they are impressed. And so on. I mean, it's not exactly like that. It's more than that. But like, you know, I, it's like the person is a visitor. It's, uh, they have a visitor's aura. It looks so impressive and so powerful. And fresh. You get what I'm saying? Then that visitor is honored above all honor. Above all Honor above all, kings, above all nature and all created things. Yes, but the one who is in the house who's been talking to you every day, talking to you like a mother talks to her children every day, every day, you get up and don't honor your mother after the plenty talking, your father's plenty talking, and you're rather honoring uncles. He said, oh, my friend's father is a very good father. How many have seen children who like their friend's parents? Or even it's you yourself. You like your friend's parents. You feel that your friend's mother and your friend's father is nicer than your father. And when you go to their house, the way he even talks to them and everything is different from the way you, your own father talks to you or your mother talks to you. Huh. They were driving at the age of 15. They didn't even wait for 18. Then they were giving cars. Hey, wow. Are you listening to me? I am explaining to you how God notices when you give something to someone else rather than to him. That's what I'm talking about. When he sees that you like your friend's father more than you like your own father. When he sees that a, a pastor has come who is a visitor, it's like he, you are so impressed with him. I mean, you have never seen dollars before, but this pastor will see dollars. You have never seen euros, but you have been able to bring euros to come and sow a seed in the visitor. Meanwhile, we laid a red carpet for the visitor to come as a hero. We made banners, we made invitations, we invited people, we made a special choir and everything. And the person comes as a hero to stand there. And to the person, you are bringing honor and a lot of the, 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 the host or the, 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 the one who is your father who's been looking at you, looks at you as you are so impressed giving to them, giving to political parties, giving to business connections. But he's just watching you as you leave the church. It's like political parties and whatever should use private jets, but the church should not use private jets. When we are going to various towns where there's no car, 
If you go to Ni Nigeria, one of my pastors said, he said that Nigeria is littered, the roads are littered with kidnappers and armed robbers. Every road between the towns is now owned by armed robbers and kidnappers. Are you listening? Yeah. How do you go to some of those places? So what I'm trying to say is that God sees. Now, I was telling you, this pastor, he was there. You know, there are some pastors who never receive real like cars or whatever. This pastor was there. No one had brought him any car before. Now, the visiting person came. The a church member, I think it was a lady, came and bought a, a, brought a new land cruiser and gave it to the visitor. That she's sowing a seed. I mean, she's blessed by the visitor's ministry. <laughs> In the presence of the host pastor, the host pastor was also watching. <laughs> he didn't even know that such things were possible, that it's possible to sow a seed of, a, of even of a car, not even a land cruiser. You see, the pastor, he, he, will, he will be affected. How many agree with me that he'll be affected? Yeah. That is how God is affected. He's watching. He sees, oh, this is what you appreciate. That's why you went to give money there. Oh, I see. This is where you, that's why you sow seed there. Oh, okay. This is what you believe in. I see. I see. And God is saying, for me, you didn't bring me sweet cane. Me, you didn't bring me this. You didn't, I'm just watching. He said, therefore, the curse is poured upon Jacob. You have to be careful where you direct your so-called gifts, money, and your sacrifices especially. There will never be any guest pastor who will be more important and relevant to your life than your own practical pastor who is standing with you every day talking to you. There, it cannot be. There's nothing like that in any church. Many churches have stood in the pulpit and told the people that I am a visitor. I am not So God is looking at us. And I tell you, one of the ways to drive away curses from our lives is for us to rise up and present the necessary sacrifices to the Lord. And that's why I'm talking about even the Healing Jesus campaign that I was not impressed with the giving for the Healing Jesus campaign at all. It's almost like, oh, whatever. So I am speaking to everyone, all the churches, and everybody who is listening, that we have to make sure that we pour our sacrifice to God. And as soon as you feel that giving to the church is not giving to God, then stop giving because there's no need to give to something that you are not giving to the Lord. There's no need at all. If you feel that it's not God and we are not doing the work of God is, is being used for whatever else. And so don't, don't give again. That one I would advise you. It, uh, between me and you, I would advise you that. But if you see that you are helping to push evangelism, and how many churches are doing crusade in all these countries? As we are lining up equipment in Madagascar, in Rwanda, in East Africa, South Africa, different Central Africa. We have a whole team waiting in Central Africa for the thing to lift up. Everybody is there waiting. They are all, they are, they are all waiting there. In Congo, in the center of Congo. 
They are all, they are all on standby there with cars, with this, with equipment, with trucks, everything waiting. They are just waiting for the go and then we are moving. I mean, they are there already. Everything is there. How many people are investing for that? If you feel you are supporting that, then support it. If you don't believe in that, don't believe in it. And it should be in another place where you, so, where you believe whatever they are doing. So I'm just saying to all of us that let's be careful that we don't take the sacrifice that belongs to God and go and put it to the side and give it to some other activity. In the same way as we, we don't give honor to the pastor that God has given you, but rather to visitors and impressive characters who speak well and, 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 and are very impressive for, 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 for that moment. And they are great people. But you have to know, there will be, never be anybody more important to you. Your, your, your uncle can never be more important than your father. Well, maybe in where it, your uncle becomes your father. But your, your friend cannot be a, a, your father. A father is your father. Honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you. So he said, therefore the curse is poured out. Why is the case? Because you took your sweet and said, the small cattle that you were bringing, it's like you don't bring it to me anymore. The small, small cattle. Small, small cattle. Look at it. Small, small cattle. Oh, look at it. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle. I used to enjoy the small cattle burnt offerings. Where are the small cattle or burnt offerings? There's nothing like that anymore. God notices all our sacrifices, our money, our gifts, our offerings. Even if you allow your, 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 your car to be used by the church or your, your, your anything that you have to be your fishing boat that Jesus went and sat in Peter's boat and used it. It was not just without, going without notice. He, it, he, he, he noticed it. He noticed it. And after he told them, cast your feet or your net on this side, you see something new. You see something new that you haven't seen. Let us be careful, friends and church. There are many things vying for your support, for your sacrifice, for your small cattle, for your sweet cane, for your money. There are many things saying, put, me, put your money here. I remember one brother, he came to see me after church and he asked me, he said, my sisters and whatever, they are all insulting me that I'm not putting my money in this, one of those schemes. You know these things that give you money quickly? Yeah. I don't want to mention um, um, these names here. But later on, when the thing didn't work out and it became a whole big problem, he came to thank me, he said, ah, everybody in my family is there their money is gone. People have their faith and their beliefs in what they believe in. You may say whatever you want to say in your preaching, but people have their belief. But I want to encourage you. Be a supporter of God. The day will come. The other day I was in my office and I was looking at the people there and I said, huh, when I look at my age and I look at you people, I don't even know how many more years I'll be in this office and I'll be looking at you and you'll also be in the office. I don't know. It's a miracle that we are here even up to this time. Yeah. When today, if you want to support Reinhard Bonke's ministry, it's past. You can't. It's gone. A day comes where even to give to support, you can't. That's what the Lord was telling me I should, I should go all out because that's it. This is the last stretch. Go all out. So let's go all out in what we are doing. This is what will change our lives. This is what will induce the blessing. Uh, the blessing that we seek for so many other things. You know, all my life since I was 25 years old or so, I've been in this ministry. I mean, Give yourself to seek the kingdom. One plug in one direction. It, it has fulfilled Matthew 6.33. And all other things shall be added. All other things. So I want to encourage you. 
Don't hold back and don't divert your strength, your financial gifts, your sweet money, sweet cane, your small cattle, your sacrifices into anything except into his kingdom and into his work. Don't misgive. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 13. Look at it. Beautiful. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 13. It says, take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offering in every place that thou seest. Don't put your offering everywhere. You see a place, oh, let me sow a seed here. I see a place, let me sow a seed here. Let me sow a seed here. But what does verse 14 say? Deuteronomy 12, 14. But in the place which the Lord shall choose. You see, God chooses a place. Where there and there thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings. And there thou shalt do all that I command thee. That is where your gift and your power and your strength is going into that thing. I put in all my strength into this one thing that I'm doing. You don't just go around sowing seed here and there. Somebody has come to preach, it's beautiful. You are going to buy a land cruiser for, for the person. Hey. Then we are going to bring more people to come and preach every month so that you buy more land cruisers. Now, watch out because God notices every little action that you take. Every, every cent you give. You know, one time, Some, something approached me. Some, I, I'm, it, it skips my mind at this moment, the exact example, even whether I can actually give the example on stage. But it was like to give money to somebody. And I, I felt, no, I felt that if I give money to this, it will offend the Lord. Yeah. I felt that if I give money to this, thing, it will offend the Lord. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't give money to politics, politics and what those things I, I should take the church money to give it to political party <laughs> are you with me yeah. I don't know the example but I, uh, that is I mean something that but it's like I can see sometimes there are certain things that if you put your support there God will notice it I say, oh I see oh I see <laughs> no further comments only actions now there's no need for God to be your enemy. There's no need for God to be your enemy. Make God your friend through your offerings, your giving, your tithing, and your small cattle in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, I didn't feel your show during the healing Jesus. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel your involvement. Tell the person, I don't feel your involvement during the healing Jesus. Whatever, you didn't give much. They didn't give much. And when you don't do an exam well, you have to do remedials. Envelopes. And we gave envelopes. Have they brought them? People have brought envelopes today. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, do you, did you give anything to healing Jesus? Come here. I mean, do you do, are, you, are you a, a Ben MP partner? I don't, I don't have, have that feeling that you even know what is healing Jesus. Who said, do you know what it is? Do you know what is healing Jesus who said? Hey, people are some will. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. I believe 1,000 people can give $1,000 uh, and some of course can give more than that. Whoever you are, Give to healing Jesus. I'm, I'm being specific. And I know God is going to do that. Take out your offering, everybody. Take out your offering. Your sweet cane with money. Your small cattle. Your what? Your bent offerings. All right? God wants to bless you today. And also give your tithes and everything you have. Just give it all in one. You know? It's going to be a blessing for you. And the choir is going to sing during the offering. And um, we're going to 
experience God's great blessings. May the power of God come over your finances, over your giving, and may the grace of God be over your life. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for this great blessing that we receive. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord, with thanksgiving. Amen. You want to give by mobile money? Just send it right away. Yes, this is a normal offering. Yes, this is a normal offering. And the Healing Jesus one, I'm saying you, you also know where to give for Healing Jesus. Is it the same place? Okay, where is the Healing Jesus one to? You want us to do healing Jesus now? Healing Jesus. All right. If there's anybody who wants to give towards healing Jesus, you can come forward now. The healing Jesus one. All right. Okay. Envelopes. If you have any envelopes, you can also come forward. The healing Jesus campaign. Envelopes. Envelopes. Beautiful. How many have just, it just happened that if you just remembered the healing Jesus as I've spoken about it, like you have forgotten, but you've remembered now, raise your hand, give me a wave. All right. We want people to donate 100 CDs, 100, whatever, 1,000, everything. Give specially. Details on the screen for healing Jesus service. Yes. This is the healing Jesus service that I was talking about. All right. Now let's give our offering, a normal offering. Come forward and just put your offering in the same basket quickly.